Now, about a quarter of a billion people around the world are affected by asthma when the lungs' airways constrict, making breathing difficult. For decades, we've treated the conditions with drugs that relax the muscles in the airways and damp down the immune response that makes the airways tighten in the first place. But recently, researchers at Leicester University have discovered that asthmatic airways also contain bulkier muscles than they should do. This is caused, they think, by the same inflammatory signals that trigger the airways to constrict. And now they've gone on to show that an experimental drug called Favipiprent that blocks these signals can prevent and even reverse the muscle changes, potentially ushering in a whole new way to manage asthma. Chris Breitling. So in all of us, we have a layer of muscle in our airways. And in asthma, the amount of muscle is increased. And we found that this is related to the amount of symptoms that you have. And you also are at risk of more attacks. So we, have for some time, have been considering how this muscle increases in asthma and also how you could then go about looking at trying to reduce that with different therapies. And the amount of muscle is a problem because what it takes up space and also makes your airways better able to constrict and and make you wheeze. That's exactly it. When you look at the airway itself, which you can do with imaging, such as a CT scan of the lung, you can actually show that the airways are narrowed in people with asthma. That narrowing is related to the amount of muscle in the airway lining. That then makes you then more predisposed to developing wheeze and having asthma attacks. And you think you found a way in, do you? You think you've got a way of getting on top of this? So we undertook a clinical trial of a new drug called Febupipram, which is a pill. And in this trial, which was just for 12 weeks, we found that the intervention, the febupipran, reduced the symptoms and improved the breathing tests and reduced inflammation. And we were really quite surprised by the fact that this therapy could reduce the amount of muscle in the airway lining. And because we were quite surprised by this, we wanted to really then understand how that could happen and how this might work. How does this febupipran drug work? What does it actually do? So the drug blocks a particular receptor called the DP2 receptor. The signal for that that then actually activates that receptor is a substance called prostaglandin D2. And this prostaglandin D2 is increased in asthma and it made us consider that this might be important in terms of the increase in the muscle mass. So is your hypothesis then that the muscle cells are responding to these signals and that is causing this muscle thickening and these muscle changes that you see in a chronic asthmatic? So we certainly know for some time that this receptor is on inflammatory cells and allows those cells to then move towards the airway in asthma. And we did consider whether as part of a repair mechanism there was a similar process that was happening on these muscle cells. So this is why we then turned to then the laboratory experimental approach where we then took cells that we had grown from these samples from asthma subjects and we then looked at whether they expressed the DP2 receptor and they did and we were able to identify that that was driving the movement of these cells that could be blocked by the drug in a dish then enabling us to then show that we could get the same results as we were getting in the clinical trial. And so what are our learning points from this? We've learned a number of things. It's certainly given us a lot of encouragement towards getting it into the clinic. And indeed, this particular drug is now in what we call phase three trials, which means that within the next year, we know whether this is a therapy that's effective and then can then be potentially taken into the clinic. What it also has told us is that the muscle layer in the airway in asthma can be changed I consider that important because it then starts to allow you to think about things that we haven't done before. Could you actually reverse some of the abnormalities that we then see when we take samples from the airway? And these findings suggest that that's actually possible. Well, that's a breath of fresh air, isn't it? Chris Breitling there. And that study was published in the journal Science Translational Medicine.